Frequency separation is a powerful retouching technique that helps us separate visual information of an image into different frequencies, which in turn allows us to quickly and efficiently correct colors and values in the image without affecting the textures. When this technique is misused or overdone, it becomes very apparent to a trained eye, but often beginners can't even tell when that's the case, so this technique has unfortunately become almost synonymous to bad retouching. But blaming the technique for what users are doing with it is the same as blaming cars for all of the car accidents on the road. It's all about understanding when and how much corrections to apply with it. And I still use it whenever I have to deal with a set of retouching issues that include color values and texture problems in one same place, especially if this problematic area is too big to fix with just the clone stamp tool or the healing brush. This video tutorial is not meant to teach the technique, it's only supposed to explain how the scripts on our panel function, but if you're new to frequency separation, keep an eye out for our upcoming additional training for the Retouching Academy panel's users. It will be released on both Retouching Academy and Retouching Academy Lab websites. Be sure to check the link under this video, we will add it when the course is released. So back to the Beauty Retouch panel scripts. There are three frequency separation buttons. The first two are based on the apply image method and are created for 8 and 16-bit images. They are absolutely identical except for the specific settings that should be different depending on the bit depth of the file. I'm going to use it now to fix this little scar on the cheek and even out the colors underneath the texture of the lips a little bit. The script will prompt you to enter a specific pixel radius depending on how much of the separation between the frequencies you require to fix a specific issue. For demonstration purposes, I will go ahead and work with the preset pixel radius, which is 6.4. And while this default number that we chose for this script will work well for most medium-sized issues in the beauty and portrait images from the majority of the modern DSLR cameras, it is still absolutely necessary that you understand what the correct choice of the pixel radius in this technique is based on. So once the necessary layers are set up, I will pick up an appropriate retouching tool, which can be the healing brush or the paint brush, and make sure it is soft enough for me to even out the colors and values under the textures. I often use different tools and add more layers between the high and low frequency layers, sometimes even change their blending modes for more precision. And I will also adjust this new layer's opacity to make sure my corrections are subtle. Often this may be enough, but sometimes the texture on the high frequency layer may require some attention too, and there I will only use a hard-edged clone stamp tool so I don't smudge or soften any of the textures there. Always double checking my adjustments before moving on, and that's done. The other frequency separation button called Custom is based on a slightly different setup where the high pass filter is used. I personally prefer this method whenever I resort to using frequency separation because it allows me to actually see how much texture I'm separating onto the top high frequency layer. My choice of the pixel radius will always depend on the details of the retouching task that I'm tackling, and I love this method for being so visual when it comes to choosing the amount of texture to bring up to the top layer in the frequency separation setup. Once I choose the high pass value, I memorize the number and punch it in again in the Gaussian blur dialog. The rest of work is absolutely identical to what I have already demonstrated. I usually work with the healing brush set to sampling from current and below layers, and sometimes even with the simple paint brush underneath the texture. And I use a harder clone stamp tool set to sampling from the current layer only when working on the high frequency layer. The truth is though that when the pixel radius is selected correctly, I barely ever need to touch the texture layer at the top. And regardless of what frequency separation method you choose to use, just remember that A, this technique should be used sparingly and only affect mid-size areas where you have a mix of issues that involve color, value and texture problems. For everything else, use the simple retouching tools or the dodge and burn technique. And B, your changes must be very subtle, so don't forget to check your results by toggling the visibility of the entire frequency separation group before you move on to the next stage of your retouching. 